So by this point you may be wondering, okay, this is all interesting in theory, but how is this put into practice? I mean, how do we really know that the airplane is loaded at a weight that's not too heavy, that we can meet all these requirements for our runway takeoff performance and our climb segment performance? So let's take a look at this example. Uh, what airlines generally do is contract out, usually contract out with a vendor um, who is basically providing the information about the airplane's performance, about all the different airports that the airline intends to fly into, about the obstacles around these airports, the runway lengths of these airports. They put all this together and produce sheets of data or uh, oftentimes this data is transferred to the airplane through ACARS, so the flight crew can request performance data for a certain airport through ACARS for a certain runway, and it looks at that current temperature and basically everything needed and spits back out, this is your maximum weight for today. Uh, but uh, for a little bit more old school example, let's look at this. So this is a takeoff performance data sheet. And this was produced for uh, Dynamic Airways and for the MD-88. And you can see really specific up here, we have MD-88-219 with JT-8D-219 engines. So we're getting really specific. We also can see up here, this is for a flaps optimum configuration. The MD-80 has a bit of a unique flap system where the pilots can essentially pick a specific flap setting very specifically to produce the optimum takeoff performance. So if we look uh, over here on this side, we can see the temperature outside, and then we can see our this table is going to show us the performance limiting weight in pounds with respect to our temperature and the winds for a dry runway. For calm winds, for example, let's start with the cool temperature. Um, five degrees outside, five degrees Celsius, and it's calm winds, we then have a maximum takeoff weight of 148,866 pounds. Um, let me point out, and it's not actually shown on this part of the chart, that the MD-88, this particular airplane, actually had a maximum takeoff weight of 160,000 pounds. So, you can see that 148,866, that's considerably less than that. And this runway, it does give you the distances of the runway up here at the top. Um, however, it's really not that short of a runway. It really had to do more with the obstacles around the area. Uh, here you can see, for this example of 5 degrees Celsius, there's a little O shown right there. And actually everything on this page is O. That indicates that there's an obstacle that's limiting the takeoff performance. So there's some sort of thing with the climb performance most likely that's limiting us on this day. And if you get to really warm temperatures, um, 37 degrees C for example, here we have a on a calm day 137,374 pounds. So we're really under our max takeoff weight of 160,000 pounds. Now you may be thinking, oh well, we could just use our headwind information. If there's a good headwind blowing down the runway of 10 or 20 knots, look at that, we've got headwind information. And we can get some more weight for the airplane to take off with a heavier weight. And that's true, possibly. Some airlines are going to maybe let you do that. Um, I tell you, the issue with that, let's say we have everything planned, everybody's loaded on board, and we are taking off, and we have it loaded up to 151,579 pounds. Airplane taxis out. And as the airplane's taxiing out, the headwind goes away. Uh-oh. Now we've lost our headwind, and now we may have to use this lower weight or even this lower weight, which is bad. We don't want to have to go back to the gate and offload passengers. So to be on the safe side, Oftentimes, what airlines are going to do is use the calm weights and not bother with any source of headwinds. Okay, so in another example, let me show you the bottom of this chart. So here's the bottom of the chart. Um, you got a little more information on the different limit codes um, was available. So, all right, let's look at 
an obstacle in Lakeland. So sometimes the performance data doesn't really exactly make sense. Uh, this was an example uh, when I worked for the air carrier. We were operating in and out of Lakeland, Florida, and we consistently had lower than our maximum takeoff weight of 160,000 pounds. So I started looking into what was going on with this because we have a fairly long runway here. Florida is flat. There was not mountains, obstacles, or anything really around that we could tell. So upon calling up uh, our performance vendor, which was ironically in Sweden, I asked about what the obstacles were that they showed for Lakeland, Florida. And they told me about a tree or something that was right off the end of the runway. And that was affecting our performance numbers and, and causing us not to be able to take off fully loaded at 160,000 pounds. And generally, an airline, you want the most weight you can get because the more weight means more passengers, bags, and possibly fuel that you can carry. So we took a look at Google Maps of the airport, basically just looking for this tree or obstacle or whatever it was that they had. And we can see the end of the runway here. We've got a nice uh, little cutout here. Uh, probably is considered part of the clearway off the end of the runway here. We've got a road going around this area here. So it seemed to be fairly straightforward. Um, interestingly, though, I took a look at some older data. So this is a new Google map of the area when I was looking at this. Uh, some older data revealed something interesting. Um, you can see that this road previously went about like this around this area and um, there was quite a bit of trees in this area that wasn't there before in the in the newer slide I believe what may have happened is the airport's perimeter possibly used to go right along here and the airport may not have had control of this area and there may have been trees or things here pole tower I don't know close to the runway all this is going to affect the performance data. So again, remembering from previous slides, we have to reduce our weight to ensure that the airplane has adequate performance to clear all these obstacles if we have an engine failure. And so I ended up having to inform our performance vendor that their data was flawed and ended up that they revised that data and we were able to take off out of Lakeland with our maximum amount of weight on the airplane.